Here at Covenant Reformed Church, we worship differently. That is, we worship biblically. We don't let the ways of the world and culture dictate how we worship God. Therefore, our worship doesn't look like a rock show or a pop performance. You might say it's otherworldly. And we know in the Old Testament, God prescribes certain forms of worship for Israel. He dictates every minute detail in how they are to worship, even if they change a fragrance in the incense. Uh, God would consume them with fire, which we see with Nadab and Abihu when they offer God strange fire, the Old Testament says. God wants to be worshipped as he wills, as he prescribes. God is close to his people, but it's always on his terms. And it's always been that way ever since the garden. Now, some might argue that in the new covenant, the freedom that Christ brings is liberation to worship ever how we want to, to worship God as we desire to do what makes us feel good. Uh, we might have that appropriate emotional response, but isn't it true that there is only one God in both the Old and the New Covenant? Is it also true that the New Covenant commands us to offer God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire? It's the same God who desires us to worship according, accordingly, according to his word, his word alone. That's sola scriptura. So we are a Protestant church, thoroughly Protestant. Uh, sola scriptura, worship God. Uh, we believe God only according to his word. Our faith comes only from God's word, but also our worship only comes from God's word. And just because we're worship doesn't mean we're not also historical. We are a historical church. Every church worth its salt is historical. Novelty, uh, sex and cults are novel. But the Christian church is historical. You see, Christ said that his church would always stand, never to fall, never to be usurped by the powers of this world. And the church for the last 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, has had God's word. The church has had the Holy Spirit. And and led by the Word and the Holy Spirit, the church has bequeathed to us, the ancient church, the medieval church, the Reformation church, has given us not only doctrines, but practices. And so we must be informed by our history. And you see that in the Reformed uh, church. For example, our love for the Psalms comes from the ancient church father, Athanasius, uh, who also has given us our doctrine of the Trinity. So he's not only bequeathed to us our doctrines and understandings of the Trinity, which come from the Bible, but also our love for singing God's word. Our desire of catechetical, for catechetical instruction has come from Ambrose. How to preach. We learn how to preach and what is preaching from John Chrysostom. And our instruction in the sacraments comes from St. Augustine. So we are not only thoroughly biblical, we are informed by the past. We're a Protestant church, historical church. One might say truly Catholic. <laughs> um, and just because we're biblical and old doesn't mean we worship the way of the Old Testament. Jesus, when he was talking to the woman of Samaria at the well, the Samaritan woman, he told her a time would come when we would no longer worship in earthly places but that we would worship in the true heavenly temple that was Jesus, is Jesus. And that day had come, has come. And so the writer of Hebrews calls us away from Mount Sinai, away from the sacrifices and ceremonies of the law, not to worship in the shadows of Christ, but to worship in the reality, to worship in Christ. He is our worship. He is where we worship. He's the object of our worship, Jesus Christ. And him alone so worship should be utterly christocentric filled with christ we come to heavenly zion hebrews says we come to jerusalem the golden heavenly jerusalem where we worship with the angels we worship with the saints in festive gathering and there we come to christ whose blood speaks a better word than the blood of abel and there we are to offer god acceptable worship with reverence 
and awe, and that acceptable worship with reverence and awe, coming from the Old Testament, principle by the Old Testament. The principle there is decency, it's order, it's liturgy. We are a liturgical church, and we're liturgical because it's biblical. The Bible itself is liturgical. The Bible orders, the Bible is orderly. It orders our life. It orders our worship. And so we are liturgical. And lit liturgy is not a, a nasty word. Everyone is liturgical. Liturgy is just when people get to worship and ever how they worship, they're ever how the principle and the way that they worship is their liturgy. So everyone has a liturgy. If you attend a church with a bulletin and it spells out what you do, it's liturgical. And even churches that are, that are very free in their expressions and aren't relying on forms from the past and forms from... Uh, ages gone by who want to be completely emotionally and freely free in their worship they are too uh, predictable and pragmatic take the quakers for example quakers is a tradition that, sh that attempts to divorce itself from any and all forms and so they sit in a room together and wait for someone to start quaking and once that person quakes he's filled with the spirit now it's on now it's time to worship but even that becomes predictable predictable even that is pattern it's liturgical so even liturgical churches that are charismatic or evangelical where they have the guitarist and the praise band noodling in the background waiting for someone to be filled with the spirit it's all predictable it's all pattern everyone has a liturgy the question is is your liturgy biblical is your liturgy good is it historical and so i invite you to come worship with a biblical liturgy this sunday with us at covenant reform church it's a it's a historic worship informed by the past, but founded on God's word where he calls us to worship. He's the audience. We're all the performers, not just the special people up front with the sway babes and the guitars and so forth. We're all the performers. We all have a part and a role to speak and to say. We all have a script in the divine drama that is worship where God calls us into his presence. We enter his courts with thanksgiving. That is, praise is the way to God. We enter, we come to God through praise. And prayer is our position before God. The law guides us. The law of God guides us and the gospel is our devotion. And all the forms that we have in our liturgy are there to carry us along with the law and the gospel and to accompany the ministry of the word and the sacraments that we might praise our great God, that we might glorify him, him alone. And we do so through Christ, our savior. And so we do, I do invite you to come worship with us this Lord's day at 1030 in the morning. We have two services. You can come at 1030 in the morning. I invite you 1030 in the morning to the divine service. But we also have another service at 5.30 in the evening. So perhaps you wanna to go to your home church in the morning and you don't have an evening service, you can come to ours or maybe you work Sunday mornings. Uh, the man won't let you off, but you're off in the evening. So you can come worship with us at 5.30. They are two separate services, two different services, but they are both wonderful, good, biblical, and will be good for your soul. I promise you that. So please come worship and leave this world behind for an hour or so. Well, God bless and hope to see you soon.